Hello, it's Keto Granny. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm just doing a live for anyone's out there who wants to talk about getting healthy for the year 2021. Getting healthy in the year 2021. That should be very important um, as we go forward to get healthy in the year of 2021. See if anyone uh, is here or if you, as you come in, state your first name and where you're from so I know who's watching. But I'm just talking about making healthy um, resolutions. This is the time of the year that a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. I usually don't make a New Year resolution anymore because I usually don't keep them when I make a New Year's resolution. But I um, live uh, the ketogenic lifestyle, and that's the main thing that I used to make resolutions for was to lose weight, to get healthier. And now that I'm living that lifestyle, more or less, um, it's something that I want to share with others Um Let's see, I see someone here, but they haven't stated um, what their name is. But I'm just doing a live tonight just to talk about New Year's resolutions. Hi, Sarai, how are you? I love to watch your channel. I love watching your channel. Um, I'm here just talking about getting healthy and, and just some of the things that you can do. And for the New Year's resolutions, are, are you making a New Year's resolution this year? And if so, um, what, what is it going to entail? And, you know, when you make a New Year's resolution, you really have to um, start setting goals in order to reach those resolutions. And, you know, stick, stick to them. Good, thanks. I love watching your channel, too. Thank you so much. But making New Year's resolutions, these are just little goals that you set for yourself, um, you know, make a resolution to get healthier and then decide what you need to do in order to get healthier. Um, um, do you need to lose weight? Are you wanting to exercise? Are you just wanting to do it with the foods that you eat? Just decide what you want to do and what you need to do in order to be successful. So I'm looking to see if any others, I see there's someone else here also. But, you know, losing weight is not something that's easy to do. It's something that I struggle with. I struggle with right today, even though I've lost over 120 pounds. I struggle with it, you know, keeping it off and different things like that. I've been, been maintaining my weight loss for a while now. Um so that's kind of easy to do as far as maintaining, but during the pandemic, a lot of us, myself, especially I'll say for myself, I uh, gained weight. I gained almost 20 pounds during the pandemic. And that was, um, I had my grandchildren. So for the most of the time, I made two separate meals. I would cook for them and then I would cook for myself um, something keto or something that, you know, was always different from what they ate until... The last part of when they were here, I, I, I was so tired I had to give up and it just became easier for me to eat what they ate and then just try to eat in the smaller portions. But that didn't work as far as because I was on the ketogenic diet. And once I started eating back like that, then um, the type of energy that I was burning changed. I started back burning glucose. And so therefore, I started holding um, weight on me. And I figured it was because I was trying to eat keto, but also. Also, I was still adding in those extra carbs, you might as well say, through the day. So that food that I was eating that I thought was keto, all it was doing was sticking around and hanging on to uh, my body. So a lot of people don't realize that when they are eating the ketogenic diet and they start putting in the extra carbs, um, it just makes that fat hang around. It just hangs on to your body. But... Um, what type of New Year's resolution are you making this year or are you making a New Year's resolution? I know a lot of times some people don't make New Year's resolutions because they really don't stick by them. I used to make a, a New Year's resolution every year, every year, and I don't remember one 
that I actually stood by. It was always the same one to lose weight. I think I made that same New Year's resolution for years. And when I say for years, I mean something like 17, 18, 19 years to lose weight, to get healthy. This year I'm going to lose 20 pounds and this year I'm going to lose 100 pounds. And I never did any of that until I was ready to do that. And it really is up to you to get ready. You know, you'll know when you're ready, when you really want to try to lose weight. Um, I told um, someone just yesterday, don't wait until you get a health scare and then start, you know, wanting to get healthy and lose weight. Don't wait until you get a health scare or something that's just going to scare you into trying to lose weight and get healthy. And a lot of times that's what we do. A lot of times that that's just what we do as part of human nature. We will wait until we get sick, um, have a heart attack or stroke or, you know, find out we've got diabetes and different things like that. And then we want to try to get healthy. We have to start being proactive. We have to be proactive about our health because nobody else is going to be proactive about our health except for us. It is really up to us to be proactive about our health, especially now that they're talking about this coronavirus and everything. They say that you can uh, do things um, to build up your immunity, to help yourself. So, I push that a lot. I push drinking things like um, broth. Um, it's got a lot of vitamins and nutrients in it. I push things like, um, they say you can use vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is supposed to be really good for you. Zinc, vitamin C. Now, before you start taking any of those extra supplements or anything, make sure that you check with your doctor to see if this something that is going to, uh, that you can do especially if you are on medications. I'm on medication, so I find myself sometimes jumping ahead and going ahead and taking extra vitamin D, extra vitamin C, and things like that. But then I have to remember that I need to ask my doctor because you want to make sure that the things that you take do not interact with the medications that you use. Um. I hope everyone had a good Christmas, um, good holiday, staying safe, wearing your mask, washing your hands as you're supposed to. All of these things are also important. Very, very, very important. Let me put my top over here. And stay hydrated. It's very, very important that you stay hydrated. Drink lots of water. A lot of times when I'm drinking water, even if I'm just drinking a regular bottle of water, I'll add some apple cider vinegar to it, some lemon juice, and maybe even a pinch of Himalayan pink salt. Shake it up. And that um, helps replenish your electrolytes, your sodium. The type of salt that I usually use is the pink Himalayan salt or the Himalayan pink salt. And I'll put a pinch of that in my water and everything. And that will help replenish your electrolytes. So just in case... You know, someone doesn't know that. I'm sure that a lot of you know that, especially if you're on the keto diet. I notice a lot of people do use the ketogenic um, diet, but they use it as a diet. And you really have to understand that the keto diet is not a diet. It is a lifestyle. It really has to be a lifestyle change in order to be successful on the diet, in order for it to really, really work. When I first started this diet, I was so obese. And when I say so obese, I mean, I know I weighed well over 350 pounds, but I wouldn't get on a scale. I didn't get on a scale because I really could not find one that would weigh me. The only time I would get a good weight is when I would go to the gym. They had the scale there that went up to, it was one of the older type scales that you could weigh. And so I could weigh on that. And then on some of those, I couldn't even get my weight. They only went up to something like 310, 320. So what I would do is sometimes just get two scales, put them together. This scale maxed out at 330, so I knew I weighed over 330 pounds. And then I just try to guess something in between, you know, there. <laughs> um, I, now, I think it's really good and really cool that they have scales 
that go really, really high as far as weighing people. I've been watching, you know, uh, videos and everything, and I see where some scales weigh up to five, six, and 700 pounds. And that's really, really good because I wish I were was able to find something like that when I, um, you know, back back in the day, back in the day, um, you know, to have that type of skill at home, just to know how much I did weigh back then. Um, like I say, this is just, I'm, I'm uh, on here just talking about uh, New Year's resolutions as far as getting healthy. Um, what type of goals are you going to set in order to reach um, that New Year's resolution to keep it going for the year? Um, what are you planning to do? Um, I know a lot of us on here, we have our own uh, channels and everything where we are showing our weight loss journeys, where we're trying to motivate each other and motivate others um, to lose weight, um, to show them about our struggles, um, you know, it could because it's not easy. Like I said, it's not easy to lose weight. Your body is not set up to lose weight. Your body is set up to hold on to weight. Your body is uh, set up to, um, you know, to hold on to those type of things and nutrients and everything. It's not set up to release and let those type of things go. So that's why weight loss is very hard. It's and a nat an unnatural thing for your body to do. So that's why it causes stress on your body when you are losing weight. Um, a lot of people struggle with losing weight. Um, I was considered morbidly obese. I still consider myself morbidly obese. I was looking at, at one of the, um, I have the Renfo scale and on that scale it says that I'm now just obese. But to me, I'm still morbidly obese because I still have an additional, let's see, 40. I still have an additional 50. I say 70, but I have an additional 50 pounds that I, I want to lose. And then when I get there, like I tell everyone, I'll know if I want to lose more weight because I don't want to be looking like a racehorse. I don't be looking like one of them crackhead uh, people who lose weight, people who lose weight and they look like them crack. I don't want to be looking like that. No, grandma don't want to be looking crazy when she reach her goal. So that is not, <laughs> you know, I want to make sure I'm doing healthy keto. And if you're doing keto, you want to make sure that you're doing healthy keto. I heard someone re refer to that term as skinny fat. I don't want to be skinny fat. That's not what I want. I want to be healthy fat. I'm healthy, healthy, a healthy size. Let's just say that but I don't want to be skinny fat after I reach my goal. <clears throat> now losing weight, it's not just harder the, at the older that you get. Losing weight is going to be hard at any age, I think. Any age when you start trying to lose weight, unless you change your eating habits and you make it a lifestyle. And, um, making it a lifestyle, all you have to do is just start doing research um, if you can, if you have a, a doctor that's understandable, some doctors um, are against the ketogenic diet and some are not. Um, there was um, just uh, I want to mention this. I had gotten a blood clot since I've been doing the ketogenic diet. I have gotten two blood clots. There were two incidents that I went in to the doctor um, that I had blood clots. Now, when I did get these blood clots, the things that concerned me the most was I thought maybe the ketogenic diet had a lot to do with it because I'm on a medication, um, a blood thinner. The doctor told me in the hospital, the first doctor told me not to worry about it, that they didn't feel like the keto diet uh, food had that much of an influence on that type of thing in, in your body. However, after I got to the hospital, there was a doctor there. He was totally against the ketogenic diet, and he felt like the keto diet did have something to do with causing my blood clots. So while I was in the hospital that time, I made sure that I got a list. I asked my doctor for a list 
of foods that are mainly vegetables that were considered to be more keto friendly if you're taking a blood thinner. So they do have a list that you can get um, if you're on blood thinners that shows you um, medicine, I mean, uh, vegetables that you can eat that are, is not going to change that PT and INR level so much. So that's why it's good. Even if your doctor doesn't believe in the ketogenic diet or they are iffy about it, make sure that you mention it to them, like I said, because you want to make sure that um, nothing interferes with your medications. Now, I have some had some doctors before then and before I told them that I was on the keto diet, um, they didn't believe that food really affected too much of what you ate besides making you fat and giving you diabetes, that, uh, high blood pressure, eating too much salt. That was basically all I used to hear when I, you know, back in the 70s and stuff, because I've been heavy and like that for a long time. Um, I don't know if anybody else has had that problem. But then, you know, so I have problems with the high blood pressure. Uh, I was pre-diabetic. But now that I have done keto, um, lost over 100, like I said, over the 100 pounds, my blood pressure is a lot better. That's not saying that I don't have problems with blood pressure sometimes. But my blood pressure readings are a lot better. Um, I have the AFib. So all of those things are better since I have lost weight. I used to have to get uh, injections. Um, in my knees, that was no fun. When you get those long needles stuck in your knees because of knee pain um, or in your shoulders, I used to have to get them in my hands, right in those patterns and stuff there. And it was called trigger fingers. And my fingers would actually just roll up, look like little pinwheels. They just roll up and, and be tight like that. And the doctor would have to unroll them. And then they would have to give me injections in there. And I think they told me I can only have so many injections. And I had gotten to almost to the maximum of all the injections that I could have in my body. And then I found out about the ketogenic diet and I started doing that. And I haven't had to take any injections since. So I know that the ketogenic diet has a whole lot of benefits. It is very, very beneficial, not just if you are, I want to say, uh, older or up in age. It is beneficial for young people. It is beneficial for everyone. It is beneficial for everyone. It has so many benefits. Now, I know there are a lot of different diets that people do. I hear people, where well, there's the carnivore diet, um, which I believe uh, is the keto diet, um, and you're just concentrating more on your proteins is the way I feel is what the carnivore diet is. You're just concentrating more on eating proteins. Um, I see a lot of people who do the, the OMAD diet, the one meal a day. I tried that and that's very, very good. Um, it was good for kickstarting uh, my weight loss. It was good for um, just for a whole bunch of things. Um, it has a whole autophagy. You get a lot of good benefits of autophagy um, if you're doing the um, OMAD one meal a day. And then I see a lot of people on here, they have a lot of great success with the one meal a day also. Yes, they do. Um, so are you making any New Year's resolutions this year or are you just going to play it by ear? Um, just looking to see if anyone else comes on. And also I'm, trying to build up my, I guess it's called the view time and, and subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up or like, if you like the video, um, share it with others. Um, I have a challenge that I am going to be doing uh, for the month of January and it's the move the body challenge. Um, I'll be posting, um, on a video, um, meal plan. I will be posting a grocery list. So if you want to participate, you can, and we can, you know, encourage one another just to lose weight, to reach our goals, to stay focused. Um, sometimes we may need accountability. Um, we can, you know, help each other be accountable. 
Um, that's what I like about the community that I belong to on on the uh, YouTube. I have been trying to learn exactly, you know, different things to do and everything. And I have been watching like others' videos and everything. And I'm really enjoying um, different things that I'm seeing and that I am learning also. I always say that you can always learn uh, something uh, different and new. It doesn't matter um, how old you are, anything that you can always learn something new. I'm taking this time to learn more about how to do social media, um, how to, you know, put together websites and different things like that, how to do the Instagram and other things like that. Just give us something to do. Um, So I don't know if anyone is doing anything special for tonight, you know, at home or we are watching television, uh, watching movies. Um, we had us a little toast earlier and we're going to probably have maybe a toast for the new year, but I think I'll be asleep. It's 837 now. Usually I'm in the bed about really early because <laughs> I get up really early. Really, really, really early. Um, but um, let's see. Is anyone? Hi, how are you? A.M. Lopez. Um, where are you from? Me, I am in Seattle, Seattle, Washington. And it has been so rainy and really colder than it normally is here. So I haven't been able to get out and walk like I want to. The favorite exercise, my favorite exercise is walking. I love to walk. I love walking, but I'm unable to do that right now. But I have a treadmill and I really dislike using this treadmill. I don't, I know why, just because it's stationary and it's in the same place. <laughs> So I'm probably going to be listing it for sale, you know. I'm going to keep it for a month and, and really for the month I'm going to try to use it. Walk on it like I should because I'm, I am I want to do the 10,000 steps a day. But it was really a lot easier for me to walk and get my 10,000 steps in a day by doing it outside than doing it inside being stationary uh, on this bicycle. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. Well, good, good. I love it here. I, I love the, the, the weather and everything here. That's why I moved here. I do. I love it a lot here in Seattle. Well, that's good to know, Shy. Yes. Um, so what, what are you? Hey, fit to fit. Hi, hi, fat to fit, Gabby. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I like watching your videos too. You're doing really great. You keep up the great work. You keep it up. Yes, yes, yes. As I was saying, it's not easy. It's not easy losing weight. It, no, it is not at all. Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, today I was doing so good. I did so good. When I say so good, that means I had my salad. Started my day off with my salad. And that's about it three cups of salad and I add in all my other goodies to it to make it just a good, good salad, you know, filling salad, not a lot of fat on it, you know, enjoyed my salad. And after I did that, then I had my, uh, had a chopped steak with it and I was full. <laughs> Later on, some cookies came in the house. I had to have a few of those cookies. I think I have eaten about six of those cookies, but you know what? I'm not going to get mad at myself or beat myself up or anything like that because I said, okay, so I've just enjoyed those cookies and I stop right there and, and, and just get back, you know, to what I'm doing. So it's going to take me three, three to four days probably to get back into ketosis. I'm not for sure. I'm not one to check that a whole lot, but sometimes I do. And I use the urine dipsticks. Or I use the the Keto Mojo. 
Does anyone else here use either one of those, like the urine dipsticks, to check their ketosis? To see if you're in ketosis sometime, or do you use the monitor? Um, let me know. Um, sometimes I just like to check to see if I'm in ketosis just to know that I'm going in the right direction. I know some people say that, you, you know, it's not necess necessary to check to be in ketosis, but sometimes I just like to check just just to see, you know, and just to be for sure. So who else do I have here? Um, like I say, this is mainly talking about setting um, New Year's resolutions. A lot of people, like I say, they set New Year's resolution. It's okay, forgive yourself. That's it. that's it. You have to forgive yourself whenever you mess up. Just forgive yourself and start again. Don't don't just beat yourself up and linger on. I shouldn't have done that and different things like that. No, just get back up and just keep going. Um, today, this evening, what I did, I went in there and I cleaned out my cabinets because I still had a lot of things in my cabinets from the holidays. I've cleaned out all my holiday foods. I cleaned out my refrigerator, got all my holiday foods and everything out, and I put them in bags and I gave it to um, someone who could use it. But do you know I ended up giving away like three or four plastic bags of groceries because it was stuff that I didn't eat. And I said I, I felt better just getting it out because, um, you know, otherwise, eventually I'm probably going to cook it. So I said, just get it out. So I got all that together and I gave it away today and uh, fixed my cabinets up where I have my keto foods and everything. It's kind of easier for me to do the keto because my husband, he leaves all the cooking up to me. So we both eat um, keto style. Sometimes if he wants something different or I feel like he needs something different, I'm going to add it in for him anyway. Because he loses weight a lot faster than I do. I've noticed that um, when people are dieting on here, I noticed that the men use, they lose weight faster than the women do. I don't check my ketones at all. I just think I'm in ketosis because I eat below 20. That's good. And that's, that's, that's how I think also, uh, Gabby, as long as I feel like I'm eating uh, within that range of my carbs, then I feel like I should be in ketosis. And then I feel like even if I'm not in ketosis, I still feel like my body is burning fat. So you're right. Yeah. As long as I hang in between that 20 to 25 uh, net gram of carbs, um, I feel like I'm in ketosis also. So that's a good point to make. It is. Um, I was saying, you know, dieting is not, it's not something that's easy to do. Um, some people make it look really easy to do. Now there is Albert Towns, I believe is his name, but he is doing a fantastic job and I just watch him every day and it just amazes me how he steadily goes down, down, down and he's doing an excellent, awesome job. Go over and watch his channel. I'm giving him a shout out to y'all. Great, great, uh, uh, person um yes go over and watch his channel and a lot of others on here um i watch fat to fit gabby i like to watch your channel also fat to fit gabby um we all need to keep motivating each other as we can um on our weight loss journey because there are times i know when it gets hard and there are times when i see people that be mean um be mean to others on here about their weight loss. Um, be mean about different things that they say to people. Don't let that stuff bother you. I don't let it bother me. I don't let it bother me at all. You could call me an old bitty or uh, whatever. It, it, it really doesn't bother me at all because it takes a lot of willpower for a person just to get out here and share their story with you all about what they're doing on their weight loss journey. And it, it takes a lot to um, put yourself out here for criticism and for comments. 
So I like sharing uh, my weight loss journey. I, I share things that work for me. And, you know, it could be things that you could take that may work for you also. No, <laughs> it did take a lot of willpower. I was like, oh, I might need these groceries. <laughs> but you know that's just a joke i had mentioned to uh a lady that i'm talking about starting uh, my my weight loss program and i told her she said she need to get the groceries together you know and, and get them away she said no i'm not getting my groceries together and giving them away to anybody she said i might have to eat that food myself I told her I know exactly what you're talking about, especially the way things are right now. I told her I may have to keep a couple of things that I don't usually eat just to have it. And I did. I kept a couple of cans of, I think they're black beans, just in case I need to eat some beans or something one day. So I kept a couple of cans of low sodium, reduced sodium uh, black beans. I do have a couple of cans of those. But um, I was also talking with, a friend. And you know, you can't expect people to get rid of their food out of the house just because you're on a diet and they're tempting you with their food or, you know, you, you see they're, they're eating stuff that you, that you can't eat. We really can't expect them to throw their food away or to get rid of their food, but we can separate our food and we can put some of our food readily available where if we get hungry or hangry or whatever you want to call it, that we can um, readily access that food, get to it real quick. Because sometimes when you get hungry, you got to get to some food real quick. I know I do. Sometimes when I'm hungry, I got to get to some food really, really quick. And I have found that it makes it a whole lot easier for me if I have a meal prep done. And it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, anything like that. A meal prep with me, um, it could be a, a protein pack in the refrigerator um, with a bowl of salad, some salad already made up in the refrigerator or some chicken salad, tuna salad. But something that I can just go in and get and eat and eat right away because sometimes... Excuse me. Sometimes I feel like I just need to eat. And when you feel like that, have something available. Now, when you're first starting off on a ketogenic diet, you are going to eat a lot as far as trying to meet your fat goal. But as you lose weight, you're going to want to shy away from eating toward your fat goal. You just want to eat toward your protein. You just want to eat your protein, which is 25, 30 percent worth of protein daily. And um, try to stay under your carbs. And usually, you know, you'll have pretty good luck um, as far as uh, losing weight and everything. But like I say, I'm building, um, just visiting, talking about um, losing weight, setting goals, um, getting ready for the new year. Like I say, this is the time of the year that everybody starts setting um, uh, what are they call New Year's resolutions. So that's basically um, what I'm talking about as far as setting New Year's resolutions and being able to stick with them, uh, setting goals and focusing on, on what, what, what we really need to do this year. Like I said, this year, my plan is uh, I'm going to use intermittent fasting and I'll be using intermittent fasting for either 16 and eight daily or 18 and six. And I'm going to do that at least five days a week. I kind of eat like that anyway, you know, every day because I've done it for so long now that I kind of don't eat until 12 sometimes, but usually sometimes I don't eat till two or three in the afternoon. The later I can eat in the afternoon, um, it's just kind of locked in my head that I don't eat after dark. If I can eat around three-ish in the afternoon, then I'm not going to want to eat anything else because it gets dark really early now, like about 4.30. Around 4.30, it's dark. So after that time, you know, my appetite kind of subsides just because um, it's dark. Um, I, I kind of have trained myself that way. So you can train yourself um, for different, different cues. Um, in your, t for you to react in your diet. You can train yourself um, different ways, different cues. Um, let me, I need some more water. 
Now, I was talking with my friend about exercise. We're talking about exercise because I like to exercise. I exercise because for me, I feel that it does help me as far as if I don't exercise, then I have stiffness. I get stiffness. Um, if I sit for long periods of time, I used to have where I had swelling in my legs and different things, but I don't have a lot of those type of things anymore. And I think it has a lot to do with exercise has a lot to do with walking and keeping my body movement and in movement. Um, I tell people, you keep your body in movement, you're going to feel better. I know that that's true because it has worked for me. Just keep moving. Keep your body moving. The challenge this one is move your body. Just keep your body in movement. Um, you don't have to do any strenuous exercise or anything like that. You can do something simple that's just raising a couple of weights. Now, what my friend did tell me, she told me to up, up my weights, up my weights um, heavier. Because I think I told her my kettlebell is something like eight pounds. And then my others are, I believe they are 10 pounds. So she told me to up my weights. I'm making a weight loss plan for 2021 right now. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I have done. I've made my weight loss plan. I have my menu already uh, for uh, the week, starting on Monday. I have um, um, I haven't picked out like exercises. You can just exercise. Just you can find a video. You can just move yourself. Put some music on. Dance. Just move. Just move. And I, I do that a lot. I just move, um, especially when I get bored around at home. I put some music on and just dance away, move, whatever. I think I entertain myself, entertain my husband. It just gives me something to do. <laughs> um, but looking to see. Yes, it's good to, and it's good to make a weight loss plan. What I do, I do journaling. I keep a journal. I got it sitting around here somewhere. I think it's over here on the floor <laughs> under my desk over here. But I do a lot of journaling and I put things in there, um, how I'm feeling. I put in there, I have my weight loss plan. I was working on my weight loss plan uh, just now, my menu, um, you know, what I'm going to do to reach my goals. I'm, uh, why, you know, I'm considering this the second part of my weight loss journey and I'm re, uh, redoing my why. And after I redo my why updated and everything, I'm going to hang it up on the wall right here in my little board so that I can see it every day and that I can look at it when I get discouraged. I can look at it for motivation. I can look at it for encouragement, but there are times when also, that I, I feel like, hey, I'm tired. Um, that's kind of why I, I get sometimes like I just have to take a rest. Um, where you really don't keep your mind wrapped around so much on your dieting and everything. And I think that's a good thing to do for uh, people when you have been on, um, been on a weight loss journey, it seems like, for a long time. That is something good to do to take a break some time to just see where you're at, see what you need to do in order to uh, progress and, you know, just look at your weight loss plan. And the beginning of the year, it, on the end of the year, beginning of the year, that's one of the best times to do that. One of the best times to do that. Um, let's see. So time zones for everyone. What time here? It is almost nine. O'clock, so I have three more hours before it will be uh, the new year. Um, for everyone who's here, um, your time zone, how many more hours do you have um, until it's New Year's? This year, New Year's is different, just like Christmas and all the other holidays were different. Um, I didn't see any of my family for any of the holidays this year. Um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, none of it. Same here, 856. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, no, it was very different for me this year. 
You got you got four minutes left, Gabby, and it'll be 12 o'clock. Oh, okay. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, everyone. Everyone have a happy new year and stay safe. Stay safe. I think every new year, I since I've gotten older, I stay in. I stay in. And I to me, that's the safest way to stay safe. And sometimes you're not even safe when you're on the inside. And that's kind of terrible. But you know, I hear some. Fireworks going off outside, but I think they've been doing that off and on all night long. Yeah, for the new year and everything. But happy new year, happy new year, Gabby. Happy new year, everyone. Um, make sure that you stay safe. Please stay safe. But I have enjoyed um, just visiting with. Everyone, does everyone have anyone have any other special plans for tonight or anything that you're going to do? Me, I'm going to go in and get dressed for the bed, um, start watching me some movies and you know, catch up on my video watching and different things like that. I haven't just had a whole bunch of time to do anything like that. Um, just gonna piddle and paddle, piddle around until you know, I get sleepy. That's one thing when you're doing keto, <laughs> um, you have a lot of energy. For a while there, I was having a hard time sleeping sometimes, um, but that has gotten better, so that's a good thing. But I want to say to everyone, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, like I say, if you know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. And that way you won't miss any of my videos that I make or share. And I just like to help people get healthy. And I like to watch people uh, and learn from them also. I learn a lot uh, watching others and learning about how they do their diets, the success that they're having and everything. And I say kudos to everyone. Everyone, I say have a great and wonderful new year. Stay safe. And I'll see you next year. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.